But, I mean, I, I feel that there's just so much tradition, just like baseball, too. It's just like it's an old sport. I feel like your grandparents grew up watching, you know, hockey. I mean, it's just such an old soul sport that is physical, and I think fans in general. I mean, anyone can deny it, but we love violence. You know, I mean, <laughs> you want to see a fight when you go to the rink. You probably want to see a crash at a NASCAR race. I mean, it's just how how it is. And I think it's just an amazing sport because it allows you to get a little bit of everything. It's the best sport to watch live. I think fans just gravitate towards that madness type thing. So, you having fun yet? Welcome to episode nine of the Late Game Podcast. Super excited for this one. Uh, I am co-creator and producer Jeffrey M. Zucker, along with my co-creator, writer, and director, Jeff Tyner. How's it going, baby? Yeah, going all right. We've both got on our prototype hats, so you will see these available soon in the merch store uh, for those of you watching. Uh, I got on my, my Polly's Pies hat. Um, I don't want to make you take off your headphones and show us your young Gino's okay. hat unless you want to. Very All fresh. Right, there we go. Yup, looking looking great. Uh, made through our friends at Gitch Sportswear that we met when we were in Minnesota. Uh, it's been great working with them so far. And uh, yeah, excited to get those out there. And feels cool to be wearing a Polly's hat. Very much um, late game hat for me too. Yeah, it feels good. I was rocking this at our game last night. And uh Let's just say a couple of people noticed they're pretty hot. Yep, absolutely. And before we dig into our most recent game, we spent the weekend in Toronto at our eighth time. Um, you know, it's been 10 years, uh, but due to COVID lost a couple of years. So our eighth tournament at the Baycrest Pro-Am for Alzheimer's and uh, at the Scotiabank Pond, um, each team gets to draft a former NHL player based on how much money they raise. Uh, this year, our team got Todd Gill, uh, an amazing NHL veteran with over a thousand games played. And you know, we play with Buckingham Sports, the the team at the rink. And uh, yeah, it was a it was a good weekend. What'd you think? Yeah, it was a blast. Todd Gill was super cool, super chill. Hung out in the room with us. Um, always a good time. We had it's usually just me and you. We had Sean, Shap the lovely Sean Shapiro. Um, maybe we can cut in some of his uh, live barn highlights because he stole the show. Um, showed the showed the boys up north how an American goalie does it. Not trying to throw shade though, but you know it's always fun to go up to a cultural center of hockey and you know try to do the states proud when we go. Uh, absolutely. Sean was incredible in that, just like he is as Nick in the movie, um, proved that that wasn't movie magic. There were a lot of, I mean, we watched, we were on the bench on the game where uh, uh, our, our boy Jason, who wore number 21, we wore Polly's jerseys. I don't know if we, we didn't mention that, but there was literally like a, almost a frame for frame recreation of um, a goal in the late game. So it was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it finally hit me that the 21 aspect that, you know, he was basically playing Riley, uh, on one of those early shifts. So, uh, that's pretty fun. And yeah, I mean, it was a, a great event. Uh, we'll certainly try to sneak in some of those, the Sean highlights. We went one and two this year, not our best showing, but it was uh, a lot of fun. And, you know, even though the late game is not out in Canada yet, it was fun to talk about it, to share it with a couple of people there and, you know, to wear our poly style tournament jerseys. Yeah, it was really cool. We got to show some of the first Canadians to see it. Um, small group after the festivities on Saturday before the Leafs game started. Um, sad for our Toronto friends for having to suffer yet another one of those early exits. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was just a blast to have Sean in the fold, you know, um, just added a little extra flavor to it. So it was good to hang with you two boys. Yeah, agreed. And you know, we got back Sunday. Um, last night we had a Bear Seals game, a nine o'clock game, so not too horrible. Uh, it was a fun one. Yeah. Oh man, it was a <laughs> it was an all timer. Um, down five two, come back, win in a shootout seven six. That's pretty badass. Including giving up uh, after tying it, giving up a goal with two minutes left, and then we tied it up with twenty seconds left in very dramatic fashion. Me and you, 
uh, applying the screen to the goalie to let that shot go in clean. Didn't even see it. So nice to have a little joint effort on the, the tying goal. It was, it was, it was a, a blast of a game. And the other team was cool. Like it was a great game. It didn't get chippy. It got a little, it got competitive for sure, but like no typical bullshit. And you know, you beat a team and you get the good games through the handshake line and you can tell some guys are going through the motions. I think last night, like the other team was very genuine with their like, that was a fun game to play in, you know, it was cool. Yeah, it was. I mean, I definitely think it's, it was tough for them to go from being up five two to, to where we ended up, but uh, they seemed relatively cool about it. Certainly some complaining about the refing, but it, it was inconsistent. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would have bitched about the refing if I was on their team. Cause we got, we got away with a pretty blatant trip late in the game. So it kind of set the stage that like, okay, we're putting the whistles away for the last two minutes, but then we got a power play that I don't think anybody on the ice realized um, was a two man advantage. <laughs> it just, it was all going by quickly for me. It wasn't, I thought like, did they get another penalty or did they not? Like, why do they have extra guys in the box? But yeah, we didn't realize we were six on three because the goalie was pulled. Yeah, it was uh, Reese leaned over my shoulder. I was like, I think it's six on three. And I told you last night, I was like, I didn't realize there were two penalties. They must have gotten an extra one for bitching, I guess. Um, because I thought he was telling me that, like, they mistakenly had one less guy out on the ice. I was like, oh, we should take advantage before they realize it. But yeah, no, that was um, that was tough to keep up with. Like, yeah, I um, I would have been pretty upset to be on the receiving end of that. But, you know, I've also been on the receiving end of that plenty of time. So it all shakes out. Yeah, 100%. It was a, it was a fun game. Uh, always good being with those guys. And, yeah, I mean, excited for the next one. We've only got, I think, two more games in this, quote, spring season. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of funny that, like, in a lot of these leagues, it's like we do a spring, a summer, and then the fall, winter. And so we get three chances to win a championship in a year, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fun. Um, so, yeah. It's crazy how fast it's flown by when someone said that before the game last night. I'm like, man, yeah, I guess I have missed a few games. Yeah, yeah, we've both been traveling a little bit, missed a few. But, um, yeah, it's been a good season, and uh, hopefully we can do it again in the summer. And, yeah, I mean, uh, one thing we were talking about when we were traveling was just the various things that we were watching. Um, and, you know, myself, I've mentioned just – it breaks my heart to finally have the chance to like talk about stuff I'm watching after all these years of watching a shit ton. And then now like being exhausted and busy and et cetera, and not getting to watch a lot. Um, but you know, I know I mentioned invincible, the cartoon on the last episode, I just finally finished this most recent season. Um, it's fucking awesome. Can't wait for them to make more of it. Uh, you know, it's in people that aren't familiar, you know, it's pretty star studded cast, J.K. Simmons, Stephen Yoon, uh, Sandra O. Oh. Um, so the the voice cast is oh, and let's not forget Walton Goggins, who's you know one of our favorite actors, I'd say. Oh yeah. So yeah, he's he's great in it as well, and just a really thoughtfully made show, and I think that it really shows how you know how much animation can vary. Um, you know, we we had lunch with our friend Jonas Diamond in Toronto, who has a lot of experience with animated film. And it was just fun talking about the potential kind of serious concepts in animation, which for me, when they happen, they're awesome, like Waltz with Bashir and and others. But uh, they don't happen enough. Yeah, it's um, we, another thing we mentioned was that sort of demarcation between when does animation save you? money to make something possible versus maybe not being worth the headache. So that was, it was really interesting to talk about that with them. And yeah, I agree. Like um, one thing that Jonas and I talked about was the Netflix uh, miniseries, the liberator, which is world war two focused on a unit that was actually kind of alongside my granddad during the Italy invasion. Um, so it's, that was a really cool watch for me because twofold was, I can picture my granddad sort of adjacent to a lot of the scenes in Italy specifically, but also I love World War II content. Um, you know, my granddad told me stories from a young age, so that's always been an interest point of mine. And it what opened my eyes to it was like, whoa, this is like, this is a way to accurately do a World War II series without having to go crazy with the budget because with a, with all, a lot of period dramas or period anything is there's kind of like a minimum threshold of a budget. You need to do it right 
or else you can just see all the cracks become obvious. So I just thought that was in to if you're unfamiliar, it's basically like a mocap. So you you, know, you have the real actors likeness is very prevalent, but it's just very stylized in a way that I was kind of turned off on in the first like 60 seconds. And then something with that consciousness, <laughs> like you just kind of forget yeah. about it and you get used to it. And that's where I think the the medium really has a lot of potential. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to take a look at that one and see if it's like the way they did Undone on uh, Prime, you know, which has Bob Odenkirk among others, awesome people in their uh, in their cast. But yeah, basically, I think it was Rotoscope is what it was called, and it's yeah, Rotoscope like they it's, it, um, then... combined with a uh, similar techniques to mocap and how you get the footage. But yeah, it's it's basically blending. It's almost the, with the Liberator specifically. It's almost like a fifty fifty shades of that Keanu Reeves movie from back in the day, A Scanner Darkly. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but yeah, that's um, really, I'm really intrigued on what that can look like in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the budget aspect's super interesting. You know, if it's like, it's like a period piece where you're blowing stuff up, you'll probably save money. But if you're, if you're shooting one night at a hockey rink, you probably would not save money. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Although when we were in Canada, I thought it was weird that we were seeing a lot of like inside out to playoff TV spots. And then I saw a trailer for it this weekend. Uh, Megan and I saw The Fall Guy, which was phenomenal with Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. It was so good. Um, but I didn't realize that's like an animated hockey movie. <laughs> I didn't know this. Um, so I'd be curious to see what that, I mean, who knows how big a part of it hockey is, but it was prominently featured in the trailer. So I'm pretty intrigued at what that would look like too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely want to check that out. Cool to hear that. You saw Fall Guy because I, I saw that it was one of the worst box office weekends like ever. I don't remember the exact stat. Um, and I saw I think Fall Guy only did like twenty eight and a half million. Uh, but, you know, I'd been reading about it prior and how, you know, it's a potential franchise for Ryan Gosling. Um, it sounds really cool being about a stunt guy. What did you learn there? Oh, yeah. So the director is a former stuntman. Um, I don't want to miss his name up, but um, so they had a little... <laughs> the way we had Alex sort of intro people when he couldn't be there in New Jersey. Um, they had like a little intro video with the two of them. That was like, kind of like a don't text PSA, but they knowing going into it, that a, a former stuntman is the director on it. Like, I think, I think that was a good idea. Cause it really, you can really see the labor of love throughout the whole movie. I thought the pacing was a little off in the beginning, just a little slow, but it really, once it gets going, it, just doesn't slow down and there's a lot of attention to detail with with showing i think the average movie movie goer like what a set is like to a degree but also just like that collaborative team approach like you really get a look into stunt teams and um i can't, I can't think of the actor's name he's in black panther and he's the patriarch of the family and us jordan peele's us um he's like the stunt coordinator he's fucking awesome he's so good in it um, Aaron Taylor Johnson plays like, um, guy played kick ass back in the day. He plays like just a real douchey up his own ass, like a list celebrity that Ryan Gosling is the stunt double for. Um, it, it had shades of, I don't know awesome. if you ever saw the nice guys with Ryan Gosling and, and Russell Crowe, but that's like, that's a 10 out of 10 movie. It's so fun. Like Gosling is, it's almost not fair how fucking handsome he is to have that much of a gift when it comes to physical comedy. And he's like a badass in the movie too. But like, what's cool about him is he can nail something that's legitimately badass and then just nail a joke, whether physical or a line delivery right after that. And it's just like, he really shines with his abilities. It's, it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm a, it's really a bummer to hear that it didn't do well opening weekend. Yeah. Hopefully it, it continues in some capacity and it's, it's really cool though, to see an actor like him, who's really good, uh, flex their muscle in comedy. Cause you know, I'm a little biased, but in my experience, I think comedy is one of the hardest things to pull off timing, etc. Um, and so if, like the really great actors usually crush comedy, whether it's first, second, or they mix it up, you know, you and I talk a lot about Jonah Hill starting in comedy. Um, so to, to, I really would love to see this movie. I'm excited to check it out. Um, you know, in Ryan Gosling was incredible in Barbie. So, uh, you know, he's starting to flex that comedic muscle. Oh yeah. It's just the wit is so, he plays an idiot 
so fucking well. And like, yeah, and it doesn't ever tip over to slapstick like he's cartoonishly dumb. Like he really tight ropes this. He checks so many boxes. Yeah, like to be badass, to be funny. I, and I do love watching t- super talented actors who aren't necessarily in comedy backgrounds shine in comedic roles. I think like, Walton Goggins, go back to him, is one of those where, like, the role of Boyd Crowder in Justified was supposed to die in the pilot, but his charisma is just oozing everywhere. So they're like, well, you know, when we bring come back to episode two, yeah, he survives a gunshot wound because he's that good. Um, so, yeah, I can't say enough good things about the whole the whole gang from Fall Guy. And um, on to another comedy movie I watched um, on, on Prime Video, Ricky Stanicki with John Cena. And it was a very weird experience. I saw so much promotion for that. I know. Like, it was... Um, I've never seen a comedy strange. jam down um, our throats so, so much, I finally, like, in digital media. I don't know. The The big promotion push for it didn't make me, like, feel like I was dying to watch it. But I was on a plane. That's usually where I like to take a chance on a movie because I don't have a lot to distract me. And it looked very disjointed. It was very uneven. But boy, were the performances phenomenal in it like everyone i felt like elevated their scenes which i'm not trying to take the shot a shot at the writing but then you get to the end and you realize there's like eight people credited on a screenplay eight people credited on like story by like a screen story by it was i think that's that was the overall problem with it was it was i think too many cooks in the kitchen but similar to ryan gosling man john cena is gold and every like every minute he's in it he's he is delivering and elevating and i just i don't know if you i think we talked about it you hadn't seen peacemaker but like i think peacemaker was like a real big show the world what john cena can yeah i mean i saw suicide squad but not his yeah yeah yeah, not his show yeah yeah so i think like the word is out now that like john cena how talented he really is he's not just like a goofy wrestler he truly has the the goods and um so yeah, overall, I enjoyed it, but it was also weird. I mean, when you mentioned kind of some of the history that you looked up, that it's been through so many iterations, and it's been like over a decade, it's had so many different actors attached to it. And I mean, the fact that I guess that the final product of that can turn out one way or another, like either really good or really bad, I feel like, but this one just seems like it was thrown into the, you know, food processor or something many times from all the discussion we've had around it. Yeah, bizarre that this took like 14 years. Like, um, I'm trying to think of some of the actors attached. I know it was Jim Carrey, um, oh, I'm blanking, um, Joaquin Phoenix, someone else before him. But it was just like, you know, a name would get, which you're familiar with, Zucker, a name gets attached. It kind of does these rounds of, of various stages of pre production for a year or two years. And then actor gets tired of waiting, drops out. And this was apparently dead in the water until Zac Efron found it in 2021, I think is what IMDb, IMDb trivia says, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, yep. But I love Zac Efron, another guy with good, great actor, but with comedic chops. Like he's so good in Neighbors. Um, yep. And just, yeah, I thought, and then um, what's the comedian's name? Um, Andrew Santino? Um, yeah that sounds right Redhead the guy, guy, he's he was, in dave yeah he's hilarious and like so he, you know i feel like there were just a lot of moments where it was like you don't really know what the scene what's happening in the scene but i having been through the editing process i feel like there's just a lot of moments where um they let the guys riff and like like that just ends up being the best take because like they just they were really good at putting a button on some scenes too that if a scene did feel long i feel like there was at least something to bail it out you know Um, but yeah, it just felt like a movie from like, you know, with it being in that developmental hell for so long, it did feel like a movie from 15 years ago in good and bad ways. But I think just, um, just, yeah, that's the best way to put it. Some highs and lows, but great performances. And William H. Macy's really funny in it too. I hope that it performed well enough for others to continue to make bigger level comedies. Hopefully we'll, we'll see those come back into the fold. Um, would love to be part of that. Definitely. On this episode, we're going to interview a new partner, um, Skull and Steel, 
they do card breaks on whatnot. They're expanding to other platforms as well. Um, we'll let them explain it, but basically a really fun thing for collecting hockey cards and memorabilia in general. Um, we're doing some partnerships with them, looking at opportunities to work together. And it was just really cool to hear about uh, how Travis and Zach started this um, and just the fact that like it's blown up and, you know, they've got four full time employees now. It's a it's a real serious business and um, but also a lot of fun. So we're, we're excited to work with them. Yeah, we you know, they're really cool dudes. Um, you know, I was unaware of this world existing at all. And you were the one telling me about it before we went to that. Uh, what was that game? Five game six. No, it didn't even go to six. Game four, maybe. Um, yeah, game four for the Avs. And uh, you were telling me about it when we we're walking up. And I simultaneously was shocked that this kind of thing existed. But then the more you were saying, I was like, that's so cool. Because we both have a background in collecting hockey cards. So just, I'm really excited to tune in and just kind of, you know, dip my toe in the water of this world I didn't even know existed. And they were super cool guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's definitely really cool to see this like passionate world that exists that you don't know about and um, excited to continue to learn more about it, you know, hopefully get reinvigorated on the the hockey card collection front. Uh, Dan Blanda, who runs our social media, you know, is a big catalyst for getting us involved with this really opened our eyes to it. So I'm um, excited to learn more. And uh, we hope you enjoy listening to Travis and Zach. Hey, guys, thanks for, for coming and joining us here. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to work with you. And, um, you know, before we we hit record, we were talking a little bit about how you guys both watch the movie. And uh, Zach, it sounds like you almost never watch movies. Yeah, I uh, I'm pretty much anti movie. He's the big uh, pop culture movie guy. I have if you've named the movie that I should have seen, I've not seen it. Like he always says Forrest Gump, never seen Forrest Gump. But uh, yeah, definitely, I definitely so, sat down and watched it, and I, I, I was, thought it was really funny. Enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> appreciate it, man. And and then Travis, you you went and watched it once. You were like, "Oh man, this guy gave me a movie comment." Yeah, yeah. The uh, the moment he gave me the phone call that he went and watched it and said it was hilarious, I was like, "All right, either uh, you know, two things are happening. I'm I'm getting pumped that you watched the film." <laughs> Or, uh, you know, you actually are putting the stamp of approval on it. So uh, I instantly put it on. There was no hesitation. He instantly bought it. And yeah, he was right. It is a hilarious movie for sure. It definitely is. Uh, well, we really appreciate that. And certainly lots of time and effort went into it on our part. And, you know, excited to, to get it out there to the mass, masses in hockey and beyond. Yeah, man. So, you know, we're going to do um, we're going to do an event together on uh, next Thursday, May 16th, uh, the late game, along with Skull and Steel, uh, your your card breaking profile or company. So, you know, tell us what card breaking is about your brand. Uh, be a great place to start. You want to start? Tell them what card breaking is. You want yeah. me to do it? Yeah. 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 I mean, basically, you know, the idea of card breaking is, um, especially even on the app that we use with whatnot, but. It's just more of like an interactive experience of, uh, you know, seeing stuff opened on camera, uh, opening up boxes of cards um, instead of being able to maybe go to a shop. Some cities are more rural that maybe don't have a shop in their like their location. So the convenience factor of uh, watching us do it or other people, but just going on that platform um, a little bit easier than like, you know, other auctioneering apps and stuff like that. It's just a lot more fun and light. But basically, yeah, you just, you know, we, we sell teams, spots, stuff like that. There's 32 teams in the league. The, the best way to describe it would be like an unboxing. So yeah, everybody knows how, so. everybody really knows what an unboxing is. You, I mean, but you don't know what's in the box in many ways. <laughs> yeah, so you it's like nothing, a mystery. You know, yeah, you don't know what's in the box. You know it's hockey it. cards, um, right? with, with the hockey cards, we just get multiple boxes. And then obviously there's all the teams represented depending on what year of the boxes it is. So we get all of them together. And then once we sell out the teams, if we are doing that style of break, um, let's say you're a lightning fan, like we are, you want to get all the lightning cards, but you don't want to go to the store and spend like a three, four, five hundred $500 to maybe get a more expensive box of cards. You can get into what they call a break and you open multiple boxes of cards, but you will get only the lightning cards if you buy just the lightning in them. So, good way to get your own personal collection of just Started, the things you yeah. want yeah and 
for this sort of card breaking stuff, like, is that how everyone does it that, that does these types of things? They sell teams or are there different ways to do it? I know you guys are known for your dollar auctions. Yeah, so there's multiple different ways you could kind of structure it for the most part. Um, pick your team is kind of the most general, like general one. Obviously, right. you just pick what team you want. Dollar auction is obviously what you pick what team you want, you want, but it's um, we start every team at one dollar and then you can bid up to whatever it is. So sometimes you can get a one two dollar team, uh, really some good deals and uh, you'll still get some cool cards, good autographs, memorabilia, could be anything for yeah. pretty, pretty good deal. Um, but there's multiple different styles. We do random team, buy one, get one free, something that they call a hit draft. Um, yeah, so kind of a little bit for everybody. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I've I've been on a couple of the streams. There's a lot of fun ways to interact, like that BOGO, for instance. You guys spin like a digital wheel I saw and other stuff like that. So there's fun reasons to stay engaged and uh, to stay watching. Imagine I'm somebody that has never done it, though, and wants to join our event uh, next Thursday, May 16th. What is sort of the step-by-step -step process? Yeah, it's a really easy process. We're going to be on Whatnot, and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get you the link to the show, uh, probably either linked in this bio or in the in the video somewhere um, to and it. You can but... join either on your browser or in the app? Yeah, yeah, browser or the app. Um, the phone app, honestly, is going to be – it does seem to work better on the phone app. I think it initially started as a phone app before it went to the browser, so it is going to work better on there. Uh, but yeah, you get an invite code, and I believe there's like a referral bonus um, that goes along with it too. I think it's up to ten bucks. So uh, get your first, maybe multiple teams That's actually. Multiple, yeah, multiple if you're doing a dollar free. auction, yeah. get a couple, a uh, couple teams maybe. Um, but yeah, you can definitely come hop in. Um, we're gonna be talking about the late game and just having a good time all day. All day long. Awesome. Yeah, that, that sounds great. And speaking of sort of that, like, long form aspect of this, like, how long do these streams tend to run? Do people need to watch all of it? Can they pop in and out? Yeah, yes. I mean, it, it really matters about um, depending on how what day of the week, really what day of the week it is. Honestly, there's certain days that uh, tend to be you know, hotter for, for us or whatever. So, I mean, on the weekend you tend to, people get paid. You want to like think of it sometimes as like going to a casino or you're going out and, uh, going, I don't know, out to the dog track or you're going out sports bedding or something like that. But you also, even if you don't necessarily get a, a win, you'll get cool cards either way. And it's a good entertaining thing. It's kind of like a video live podcast. Um, but you can go in and out. We're going to be there all day interacting if you missed uh maybe the hits you got in the break just ask us we'll show them to you no problem at all so definitely pop in and out but i mean yeah i mean even like uh to answer that first question just like the length and duration of the time there's no set you know time we'd like to be on probably seven seven to ten hours is an awesome day for us um but you know, it there there's slow days, there's fast days. We've done like but, 16, 17 hour yeah. days. We've done all day. We've done almost a twenty four hour. We're gonna stream. we're doing <laughs> a twenty four hour stream at some point in the near yeah. future. We could just uh, got one of our buddies who's gonna be streaming with us. And now that there's three of us, we could we could work in the twenty four hour stream. Just divide it into eight hours, and we'll <laughs> do a whole twenty four hour stream on there. It'll happen. That that's awesome. Well, I'm excited to see uh, how you guys continue to to grow what you're doing and. Um, I'm curious, like, what you got you guys started in this, and, and how long have you been doing it? Um, you know, so we're going on, what, about probably about two and a half years? Now, yeah, two almost years. two and a half years. Yeah, so um, honestly, this kind of started with, I saw something on YouTube of just, I don't, I mean, I don't even know who it was, but just somebody doing exactly what we do now, just opening, unboxing, but like yelling in the microphone, <laughs> freaking out. And it's like midnight, I'm up, the, you know, my wife gets woken up by someone doing screaming on the TV. I just thought that the personality traits kind of match kind of how I am, just very outgoing and energetic and wild. And like the first person I thought of that had, you know, Pokemon cards or like old school stuff was Zach. So I hit him up about it. He is, he, this guy is the genius behind it all with the cog, the machine for sure. With all the ideas of how we do stuff. Yeah. He does a lot more behind the scenes of how we promote and how we run deals for people, all that. Um, I mean, I have a part obviously in it as well, but you know, I like to bring the, the flavor, I should say the personality, <laughs> just being ridiculous on stream. That's I'm comfortable in that realm. So that's kind of how it got started. I mean, we, I just asked if he had stuff or if he's into it, he's 
you know, was just on board. I, you know, I asked him if he knew anything about digital stuff, how to set stuff up. Can we get it, get everything up and running? And it just was a weird idea that honestly didn't take much other than just like a, Hey man, you want to do this? And it was a, yeah. That's awesome. I'm trying everything. I try it all. We, yeah. we, we try it all to figure it out. Yeah. Something works eventually. Right. I'm shoot first, ask later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm similar in, in good ways and bad ones for sure. And Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's a all... double edged sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool to hear how, how you guys got started. So how long ago was that? It's been just about two and a half years. And just for a little bit of background knowledge, like we went to high school together. We were roommates. So like we've known each other for a yeah. while. Like, yeah, time. like we're, we're boys. We've known each other for good amount of time now got it so 2022 and then the name skull and steel is that like a viking steelers thing yes yeah we don't even really do football really but uh yeah, we're mainly we're pretty much <laughs> hockey now but that that's everyone that asks us that you know in the chat you know it's like oh wow like two football names for hockey stream that's yeah. that makes a lot of sense but uh yeah you know the logo is the viking like a viking head with the three diamonds for the steelers as well that's where we get our logo from yeah, that's no, that's cool. It's a good, great inspiration. And you mentioned like mostly doing hockey now. What did you start out doing? Were you doing a bunch of different things? Well, at first, uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, I kind of shoot first, ask later. We tried a little bit of everything at first. Um, we did for the first majority of the first year and a half or two years, we did mostly baseball, like baseball. And it was through Twitter and uh, just on YouTube. We didn't do too much of whatnot, but when Travis became full time, like he was our first employee, became full time. Um, we were really cranking up whatnot and doing baseball as well. But the last like six to eight months, um, we've just been doing so much hockey and doing yeah. like really well that not that we're against doing baseball by any means. It's just but like the hockey hockey has been, been so awesome and hockey it's been hockey season. Like we're all getting into it, so I mean it's it's just been it's worked out. Do you think hockey does the best because maybe the fans are the most rabid or is that just me having a bias? I think, I mean, that's a good question, honestly, but I mean, I, I feel that there's just so much tradition, just like baseball too. It's just like, it's an old sport. I feel like your grandparents grew up watching, you know, hockey. I mean, it's just such an old soul sport that is physical. And I think fans in general, I mean, Anyone can deny it, but we love violence. You know, I mean, you want to see a fight when you go to the rink. You probably want to see a crash at a NASCAR race. I mean, it's just how how it is. And I think it's just an amazing sport because it allows you to get a little bit of everything. It's the best sport to watch live. I think fans just gravitate towards that madness type thing. So that's my point. I definitely think they're rabbit. I also think it's crazy how you can skate that fast on like a blade that's like three millimeters. Yeah, it's that's absurd. Wild. Like, and then that, and then fight someone on said skate. It's impressive. It's so impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, also the cards I think are really cool for hockey. I think Upper Deck. Everybody really knows Upper Deck. That there who makes the hockey cards and uh, they do a good job. Yeah, they do a really good job. Yeah, awesome. And I I agree in in what you're saying in terms of like all the different things you get to see in hockey. I think that's one of the ways it kept my attention over the years. It's always been a part of my life. Is just it's it's so fun. You never know what's going to happen, and it's just they're doing crazy shit out there. So. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, it's awesome what you guys are doing. And I'm curious, you know, we talked a little bit about the step-by-step -step process to get started. If people want to get started, you know, what do you have any advice for people why they might want to get into card collecting in general? I mean, there's a couple of different things, you, uh, reasons you might want to get into card collecting. A lot of the reasons that we find is um, we have a, a lot of guys in there, probably around our age, who have young kids and they want to start collections for their kids or something along those lines. Or their kid plays um, plays youth hockey and like wants to get them something for their birthday. Or my wife makes like uh, these helmets and they'll get them for their kids, bedazzles out helmets and get them for their kids. So that seems to be what a lot of it I've noticed has been for. Yeah, I mean, like the common trait i mean nail on the head there that's probably the most uh reasoning i would say that's like why someone should join um obviously if you have little ones i think that they're just very cool things to collect um i'm a avid collector of just weird stuff in general comics vinyl records stuff like that so i'm already been drawn into cards my whole life but um i think it's a and you get a five color patch tar card. Yeah, just you get cool. a sweet That's Kale, just Kale McCard patch auto. It's yeah, sweet. Like who wouldn't want that? <laughs> I think it's a. Uh, I think the market is big, man. I think it's just uh, 
you know, like like I was mentioning, like even vinyl records, like people probably thought that would never come back, and like it's it's back, and they're expensive again. They're not ten cents like they used to be, but you know, baseball cards been around. You get them in a pack of cigarettes back in the day, or a stick of gum. You know, they they're not going anywhere. So I think as you know, you were to start something or make a business about doing that, like you pretty much have job security in the fact that this isn't going anywhere. Like, and something that may be worth a dollar is probably worth 10 grand to someone that's an avid collector of said, Not 10 grand, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I love Just it. a, it's a, it, it's like a, it's more to them than it would be to you, you know? And I think that if you have a market for people like that, you know, I think you have a good business model for a long time. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, um, myself, I was really obsessed with hockey cards as a kid, you know, get them as often as I could filled up binders full of them, you know, with sort of those like plastic insert, uh, pages in there. And, uh, you know, these binders of thousands of cards have mostly been sitting, you know, doing nothing since I kind of had to become an adult. And, um, I, I hadn't thought that much about them other than whenever I'd see cards, I'd get them usually like, cause I want, I just want to get cards. It's fun to open cards. And, uh, and now I have, you know, a kid that's almost four, another, another younger son and hoping they'll get into it. And then, um, you know, Dan Blanda, who you guys have talked to, introduced me to what you guys are doing. And, um, I've had the chance to sit on a couple of times. Like I mentioned, most of the times I have been pulled away for one reason or another. So I haven't gotten to sit through as much as I would like and to dig in as much as I'd like, but, um, it's been a lot of fun. You guys keep it interesting in the rooms to keep people around. And, uh, you know, I've bought into a couple of them and yeah, I just got, so I bought into a couple of them on, Thank we did a few different. Way. Oh yeah. No Thank, problem. You, Thank you by the way. <laughs> But yeah, I just I know I just got a package from you all. I was out of town and I haven't opened it yet, so I got to look. And I missed my breaks, like when I missed like when I'm, they actually happened. So I'm excited to open the box now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know I could go That's back and watch the, the video. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that might be half. The, Even yeah. if you watched it, you're like, oh, I wonder what this is. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm pumped to do that, and I, you know, I have a lot of questions when I'm in there that. Um, you know, I've been meaning to sit down with an expert and be like, all right, what's happening here? Like, um, anything that like beginners are going to need to know to understand any of like the lingo or things like that, that are going on, you know, and they don't, they don't want to necessarily feel, you know, go in the chat and be the noob. Yeah. So, um, I would just say, ask questions. We, we have no problem answering the questions. Just, uh, ask questions. We always have a lot kind of going on at the screen. So it, could potentially get confusing we try to keep it as organized as possible um but definitely ask questions we'll definitely like zoom in on what boxes it is or read out whatever you need to know what years of the box is we know like who a lot of the good rookies are so if you're like oh who would be a good you know somebody to chase for this team or you're looking for for this team um we do it all the time so we know who we're looking for <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean for oh go ahead i know i was just gonna touch on just you know even like lingo or just stuff like that, you know, instead of, you know, we kind of abbreviate some things, but like a pick your team is a PYT, okay, yeah. not to be confused with Michael Jackson's pretty young thing, but just <laughs> PYT in general, uh, uh, you know, a break is the group of boxes. It's dedicated. There'll be a sign break one, six boxes or whatever. Um, you know, and we try and to so if like, I buy like the avalanche for break one, it means everything in those break one boxes, I get every yeah, avalanche correct. player in there. Yep. It'll Got be it. every single avalanche card, whether it's a base card, it's a Macar, McKinnon, you know, anything of that nature. Um, Pavel Frankie. Oh, big, big Frankie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pavel Frankie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you would get every card dedicated to, uh, that specific break. Um, and yeah, no, Zach's exactly right. I mean, it, for us, I mean, yeah, the chat, who knows? Who knows what the chat would say if you ask, you know, noob questions, but only we're, true. Dude. We're the hosts, right? Like we're, we're, that's the chat's never happened. ridiculous though. They're and, never uh, ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like it's our job on the other end to educate you. You'd rather ask questions than to just buy something and not know what it is. He so. says it all the time. Ask before you spend money. Like yeah. we want to make sure you know what you're like, 
doing and we want you you know and we want your business back you know what i mean like we want trying to pull the bangers for you yeah so (laughs) if an explanation takes yeah it's kind of a win-win right like if yeah if if i say about the abs and there's like this great mckinnon card in there you're happy that your customer does well and you guys do well just with the basic setups i want every card to be a one of one one of one that's also lingo we want one of ones i mean it's the only card like that in the entire set possible Right. Yeah, I mean that that's awesome. It's thrilling. There's like an excitement to this that, you know, hockey people are definitely into. And, you know, is there is there like uh any recommendations for resale platforms and stuff like that? So like what if somebody pulls this Bedard rookie card, they're like, I want to go ahead and move this. I know it's a long term investment for someone else. Um, or like someone like me that has all these binders, is it like worth my time to go through them and find the best ones? Is there somewhere to take those? Um, I would say there's a couple of different avenues you could do. You could do like the whatnot avenue. It's going to be a little more time intensive probably for that than maybe like doing um, eBay or something like that, which also could take time depending on how you are loading them in. Um, we've talked about doing consignment recently. So, I mean, we've done it for other people, just never like done a whole consignment thing. So, I mean, we'll be able to do that if, if uh, we could work something out with you guys on that too. So a little bit of everything, multiple different avenues that can be done. Kind of just whatever you're feeling. Yeah. Uh, I like that. And um, all right. So I think the important takeaway for me from that recent round of questions was ask questions um, in the chat and otherwise. Um, and then, you know, I meant to ask earlier, like for each of you, um, we can start with Travis, like what got you into hockey initially? Uh, so, you know, being, I was born in 94, so I was 10 when the Bolts won the Stanley Cup against Calgary. Uh, that I just remember where I was exactly when I saw that, and um, I was at my grandparents' house, and that was always just like a distant memory that I had because I, I lived with uh, my grandparents growing up, but not when this happened. So just in that significant point of time, I just, that, that place was very sacred to me. And it, I was drawn to like how small Marty St. Louis was, but he was just tearing everybody up. I just thought it was amazing that a guy that, you know, is my height, five, eight, five, nine is great at what he does. And on top of that can take a hit and get back in there and hit somebody as well. Um, I just think like how I was reiterating earlier, like I'm drawn on violence. I think the game is awesome. I just think like, I want to see someone get laid out. I want to see a, a goal, knock the water bottle out. Like I, that's just what I want to see. Uh, I just think it's an awesome game to see live. I would encourage anyone to take their kid to see a game live or just go to one. If you have one in your area, uh, Emily arena is awesome for us. It sells out all the time. Um, we may not be contending for a cup this year, but I mean, it is fun to see anymore, not... anymore, yeah. anymore. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> As somebody that grew up going to minor league hockey, you know, with the ECHL South Carolina stinger as both Tyner and I grew up going to those games. Like I'd say if there's any kind of pro or junior level hockey around that, and you've never taken, you know, a kid, uh, your kid or, um, you know, want to help get people exposed, like just get into a game goes such a long way. Yeah, no doubt. I agree. And Zach, what about you? All right. So mine's not as deep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I used to watch a lot of ESPN when I was younger and I thought Nikolai Hobby Bullen was the coolest name of all time. Name, so yeah. I had to start watching hockey. And then also it was around the time the Bolts were good. And uh, I went to one of my buddy's <laughs> birthday parties. We went to a Bolts game. So I was like, all right, between Nikolai Javi Bullen and the Bolts, all right, I got to I'm start all, watching I'm, this. I'm back. I'm back in. Yeah, I'm just into all <laughs> sports. I'm a big sports guy. Like, I played all sports other than it seems like hockey growing up because yeah. uh, it's hard to get ice time in Florida. But, yeah, I uh, Nikolai Javi Bullen, that's why. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Javi Bullen does have a fantastic name, the Bullen Wall. And, <laughs> that's what I'm uh, saying. <laughs> it, so, so have you guys tried playing at all, like whether on ice or off ice? I played roller hockey, not like organized, but I've played it with probably like 10 guys before. Um, but I have been looking up beer league ice, like around. We have like one rink by us, and I've been looking up the beer <laughs> league. It's starting soon. That's all I'm saying. I, I mean, I know how to skate. I know how to ice skate. I'm not stopping ain't the greatest, but we'll turn. I, uh, I, um, I fear that I look too much like Phil Kessel on rollerblades. So <laughs> I, uh, 
probably just rather eat a hot dog on the side. We're putting in between the, we're putting in between the pipes. I'll I don't know what you're talking about. I might about. be between the pipes. Uh, I can't butterfly to save my life, but I'll do my best. I'll lay out for a puck or or nerf or nerf ball or whatever we got to play with. But no, I've never. I no, talking skated. about ice, dude. I've never <laughs> ice skated once in my life. Uh, like he was saying, it's just hard to get ice time in Florida. I don't. You know, I try to stay away from cold as much as possible, so I've never had an opportunity. But I don't think, I really don't think I'd fare well as far as doing both at the same time. A stick, hitting it, skating, and trying not to fall. He doesn't know we're doing it. Yeah, but we're. I guess I'm set. I guess I'm signed up for a beer league. Our right? other guys, so. other guys already in too, so we're doing it. That's three. Yeah. That's half right there. Well, uh, I, I know the late game was, you mentioned being part of that inspiration, kind of wanting to push you to making it happen. Um, so maybe we'll send some of the late game guys down to, to get you guys. I need to learn how to do the stop where you like, where you like shave the ice. I need to know how to do that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Hey, Luis Mendoza and D2 didn't know how to do it and he made team USA. So I don't know if you guys are big Mighty Ducks fans. Dougie Glad out there. That's what he always says. I'm Dougie Glad on the ice. (laughs) Yeah. He just just stands and puts his ass out in front of the goal and hopes it just bounces in. I mean, that's. It's where the Nothing dirty stuff happens. Just piss the goalie off. I'll be right in front of him all day. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I can't skate. There's no chance. It'd be it'd be probably hilarious to bring your 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 family and friends out to watch me try. Yeah, come to the fair, watch <laughs> Travis skate on the ice. Yeah, circus on ice. Me. <laughs> I like it. That's some content coming in the future. Um in you know, you mentioned getting back getting into this in twenty twenty two. Uh, how has the company grown? Like, what is your vision for the future for what you guys do? So, I mean, it's grown a lot. So we started actually Valentine's day was the first day in 2022, which Correct. my, my then girlfriend, why finally wasn't the happiest now to think about that yeah, Valentine's day. Time. Yeah. Well, uh, so started on Valentine's day and we, uh, we wanted to do it with baseball and it's so funny. You can go find it on our YouTube. We had like. So when I say we had a lamp, it was like your grandma's like with the with the manila with the manila top lamp, like barely thirty five watts, like over the car, just trying to like see them. It was ridiculous. Something out of the god. Yeah, it was ridiculous. We had like the table for two lamp that we had. <laughs> it was so funny uh, to watch. It, like we'd gone back and seen what it was, and it was just like boxes you could go buy from Target. It didn't have like anything autograph wise guaranteed or anything like that. Because there is boxes that and we could talk about it more in the stream or if you want to get more into it, where you guaranteed certain autograph or memorabilia cards. So. Nothing like that. Um, and we we did that for a while. We were slowly growing for the first, what, year, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, he used to work for uh, a company that he worked in a warehouse, and it was hot. And we live in Florida. So it was hot in Florida. So we're like, all right, we need to turn this up a notch to uh, how, how do we get you to be full-time doing this? Yeah. So what, what day was it? Uh, June 1st was my first June day. June 1st full-time. was his first day full time. It's almost a year. Oh, nice. Almost a yeah. year. Yeah. And uh, since then, like I said, we've, we've really grown on whatnot. Um, took way more off into hockey. But now, it, two and a half years in, we, uh, we've we hired my sister. She ships and sorts for us. I'm full time. He's full time. And we have another full time guy, one of our friends, who uh, is actually this month going to be start doing the breaks by himself. So, yeah. Definitely grown, definitely uh, doing great, and uh, super fun. I mean, they, it's so cliche. Like, if you love what you do, you don't work. But I mean, I'm open to carts. Yeah, how fun could that be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say, um, you know, there's a lot of people that we've grown to uh, have like even relationships outside of selling cards. Like, we play, you know, Chell on on PlayStation, and Xbox. Um, we have open communication. We got people's personal phone numbers, stuff like that. Like we're talking about, uh, meeting up to go to this national card convention, like hanging out, having some beers, maybe opening some cards. Um, we've really just kind of dedicated ourselves on trying to stand out, you know, like, you know, obviously even that's a cliche, you know, like we're in sales, I guess at the end of the day, but we're trying to always look at competition, do what you know, be our, our true authentic selves is just being, you know, dumb on the mic, just being ourselves. Like we're not pretending to sell you on anything. We love what we do. doesn't feel like work. Um, you know, you'll it, probably hear me say I'm crazy at least four times on yeah. the stream. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
but it, it, it truly doesn't, it doesn't feel like a job. It's not a chore. It's just, it's super fun. It's good to do it with people you're friends with. It's kind of like hanging out with your boys. Yeah, it's just, we're just chilling. <laughs> when, we're, when we both work together, sometimes we're working at different uh, studios, but, you know, we may mash up and work like a bit like a Thursday or a Saturday or something where, you know, I have a wife and kids at home as well. So I'm like, you know, I got to free up my days and my times to come over. But when we do that, it's just like, we're hanging out, having a couple beers. We're just being ourselves. We're just doing our thing. And it's easy when you got people with you. So it doesn't feel like you're just by yourself the whole time. Yeah. And then in the next, uh, hopefully in the next month or two, because I think my wife is going to kill me if I keep having people come <laughs> over all the time. Uh, we're, I went and looked at a couple of places. We're getting a shop hopefully in the next month or two to set something up um, where we could have a few rooms to do breaks and there'd be glass windows. So you can come in there and like maybe watch the breaks if you're just kind of come in and uh, want to get a couple boxes. And then also have like another little separate side where you can maybe have a few TVs, grab a couple beers, have a couple kegs, not make it like a bar, but just like watch a couple games, rip some, uh, rip some cards, just kind of hang out with the boys. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds awesome. It seems like a cool way for the brand to evolve. You know, really excited to see uh, how it does, what you guys do with it over this time and just like how we can get the late game uh, involved. And because we, you know, think it's a lot of fun Natural and fit. exciting. Yeah, for sure. For sure. A hundred percent. So, yeah, just to go back briefly to the event on the 16th, um, you know, what can can people expect? Oh, it's going to be both of us. It's going to be all day. Like, oh, I mean, it's going to be, there's going to be probably aluminum here. So aluminum is our third guy and he's kind of just been adopted the name aluminum. The chat ended <laughs> up calling him aluminum and it's kind of stuck. So he's now, <laughs> and it's aluminum and it kind of goes with steel and he's a Steelers fan. So it just all works out. It's yeah. skull and steel and aluminum now, but we'll be here. Um, we'll probably do like, I mean, we've done 17 breaks in a day. We'll probably do at least like 10 breaks dollar auctions all day we'll probably try to mix in any type of race so you can kind of see what you may like the best if it's your first time in um but you're gonna get both of us we, we usually tap in and now it's kind of like yeah. a wwe tag team except yeah. we're we're not going against anybody but the chair we're sitting on <laughs> <laughs> i love that and you know speaking of your dollar breaks like a lot of other sites or other companies doing it like do higher prices um, how high do like those auctions usually get? Do you sell at other starting points for certain levels of boxes? Yeah, definitely. If you want to. Yeah. I mean, so I can give you just like a prime example and it kind of touches back to what I was saying where, you know, something to you may be worth a dollar, but might be worth 50 bucks to somebody else. You just never know who wants to collect, you know, these things. So, you know, you could have four or five boxes in a break. And I just think interactively people are in control of what they pay for. So swiping to bid and then they see they've been outbid. They're like, damn it, I want that. Give me it back. And they, you know, it becomes just like battle of the heavyweights for the Detroit Wed Wings, right? But like it doesn't happen really. It, I would say it average probably between yeah. like ten to twelve bucks, maybe. Yeah. You'll, You'll get, get that one unicorn that comes in and buys them for forty dollars. And, and you're like, oh sweet. And that's kind of what I meant by like uh knowing the teams. Cause if you have like let's say all boxes from twenty one, you know like you're looking for a Cole Caulfield or Trevor Zegris rookie card. So like those might go for fifteen twenty, but like the flames who don't really have too many rookies in that Besides, like, Matthew Phillips. Yeah, they may go for five and, bucks. And uh, Rizik, I didn't know. That's my guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Rizik. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I know. I That's was, my dude. <laughs> yeah. But they don't really have that big of a checklist usually. So those maybe go for, like, two, three, four bucks. So it really goes – depends um, – but that's kind of what I meant about like the different boxes. Think of it as like models and makes of cars. Like you have a Nissan, but you have a Maxima, Ultima, and the other one. Like some boxes are a little bit cheaper. Some you're looking for guaranteed autographs, and that's kind of what I meant by ask questions. Like we will be able to explain what you're looking for in every box. So do all of yours start at a dollar, or do some start at higher numbers? If we do an auction break, it will be a dollar. And what's the what is the other style where you can just pre buy a team? Yeah, so there's probably, well, there's five different types that we do usually, actually. Okay. The main ones we do are dollar auction starts. So that's where we start everyone at a dollar. Uh, you can pre-bid before. So if you're not going to be there and you just want to see if you could get the team, you could set up to a certain amount. So you'll know that you'll win if it's under that. Um, the other one is called a pick your team. And that's where you can pre-buy and send us an offer on uh, whatever team you may want that's in the, in the buy now tab of the store. 
The other ones uh, are going to be in the buy now tab, but it's going to be a, a buy one, get one free. So again, you'll buy a team and then you'll get a team on that interactive wheel like you were talking about, or just straight random team where you'll just get another team off the wheel as well. Um, and then we do this thing called hit draft where you guaranteed a card, um, but it's of usually a bigger box where you're probably looking for nicer cards. You really don't want to buy a whole team you want to get a hit it's a little bit it's a little bit different type of break and you'd have to probably watch it to see it cool um well it sounds like fun i'm definitely excited uh to work together and yeah i mean any other thoughts or anything that you want to share with sort of the late game audience we we pretty much have made up like names that i just call like 12 of the actual team so if you just heard me say a random word that is not the actual name of the team just ask me what team i'm talking about yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a, there's all right a... do you have an example like so i mean i'll just shorten it or sometimes so like the sabers i'll just call the burrs and i said it and he was like like, like the burrs i like, call them the, the burrs, burrs i feel like mentally <laughs> yeah burrs. i don't know just like uh you got the uh the rangers the oilers i'll call like the fish and chips because you get oil on your fingers nobody likes that or like I don't know. I'll just make up some random shit. I call the Rangers the, the Rags. Yeah, the Jers. I call them the Jers. The Lanch. <laughs> yeah, the Snows. The Avalanche. The snows. The snows. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so we go to, Tyner and I go to Avs games, and we've been trying to popularize calling them the Lanch. The Lanch. I love it. We've been saying the Lanch. I feel like it's just nobody was buying on to it. I, I, I said the Chanch one day. I don't even know where the first part came from. I was like, I kind of like it, though. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely, like, see – like there's cards like you know something like this, like a nice Joe Sackick one can't of see one. On there, Probably but... can't see it, but like we can send a pick. There's, send a pick. There's definitely have an auto populate there. right over yeah, that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, you know, there's just different ways to kind of explain what we do, and like I'm I'm hoping that like you were saying, the biggest takeaway is definitely just ask questions for sure. I just I say it multiple times that. You know, if you're going to buy something, I'd, I'd rather you know what you're buying. That way, you know, you understand the entire thing that's going on. I don't think you'd go to a store and just not know what you picked up off the shelf, you know, to go purchase it. So I know it may, probably is most, makes the most sense to ask. I play three-card poker, poker blind once in a while, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never good. <laughs> All right, cool guys. Well, thanks again for your time. Um, you know, excited to work with you and excited for the event coming up and we will be in touch soon. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.